All right, so hello everyone, welcome to this session. Today's topic, um, we'll be talking about how to facilitate online workshops for the WordPress training team. Um, so people in the call here, you're all familiar with online workshops. Um, before the recording, let me just give a quick overview. Online workshops are interactive sessions like the one you're watching right now, uh, where there generally is a facilitator or a speaker who talks about a topic on WordPress. And these happen live, um, usually through Zoom, so that the audience can ask questions and make it interactive and we can all learn together. Um, facilitators don't know all the answers. So um, in some of our larger online workshops, we see where people ask questions in the Zoom chat and other people answer the questions there. So it's really a community learning um, time. Um, so more than me or a speaker coming to present our work, it's more an opportunity for people to come together and learn online, bounce ideas off each other, uh, find answers to our questions. And these online workshops are uh, hosted by the WordPress training team. So the WordPress training team, we look after the learn.wordpress.org website. So I've just opened learn.wordpress.org and I'll drop the link in the Zoom chat here. Um, we call this Learn WordPress. Learn WordPress is the WordPress project's official education website. And uh, online workshops are one of the content types we host here. So you'll see we also have tutorials and lesson plans. We also have courses. Um, if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see we have upcoming online workshops. So let me click on this here. And this will take you to a calendar that has all the upcoming work online workshops scheduled for this month. And if you, at the top, if you click, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> at the top, if you click next, um, you will also see we already have some online workshops scheduled for next month. Um, so I'll drop this link in the Zoom chat as well. Now, online workshops, um, in an ideal world, we would love to have these hosted pretty much every day and at different times of each day so that people anywhere in the world can attend an online workshop that best meets their schedule. Um, something I do personally is um, I host an online workshop at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And um, usually I do the same topic, but at different times. So this time I'm doing it in my evening to capture um, some folks from Asia and Europe. And then sometimes I would host my online workshops in the morning um, so I can catch maybe the Pacific and Hawaii and Americas. Um, so we can do the same topic over and over um, so that we catch different people in these different um, time zones. So today, today's online workshop is all about how you can also become a facilitator for the training team's online workshops. Um, the WordPress project is made up of volunteer contributors and online workshops are the same. Online workshops are facilitated by volunteers in the WordPress training team. Um, so let's go into the details. The first um, important link to have is the training team's handbook. So I'm gonna copy this link and paste in the Zoom chat. Every team in the WordPress project, every team in the WordPress project has a handbook. And this handbook details how, um, how the different processes in the team works. Oh, we just had a few more people join us. Hello, everyone. Um, we've just started the content of today's workshop. So I'll drop the link in the Zoom. Oh, Faisa, you invited them. Okay, great, thanks. Um, let me just drop the link in the Zoom chat again here. So we're looking at the training team's handbook. Every WordPress team has a handbook and this handbook lists the processes of, the, of that team. So you'll notice for the WordPress training team, we have a table of contents down the left and one of these sections is titled online workshops. Um, so 
you'll see here we have um, about 10 pages and this explains the process of um, getting an online work, hosting an online workshop. Um, so we have applying to facilitate, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Then we have planning an online workshop, scheduling an online workshop, steps to schedule a Zoom meeting, hosting an online workshop, co-hosting an online workshop, tools for hosting, after an online workshop, and finally, reviewing facilitator applications. So once you host online workshops a couple of times, you'll start to remember these process. So it looks like there are a lot of pages there, but really once you get used to it, um, I, I don't re, um, refer to these pages anymore. Like um, once you remember the process, you should be able to do it without looking at these too much. So when you facilitate an online workshop like I'm doing right now, your face is going to be recorded with that online workshop and then that's going to appear on wordpress.tv and it's going to appear on youtube so when you can when new wordpress users come along and watch your video they are going to connect your face and your voice to the wordpress brand so online workshop facilitators are like ambassadors for the wordpress brand and that's why um, we have a application process in order to become facilitators. Anyone can apply to be a facilitator, um, but th there is an application process just to make sure that person is in good standing in the community um, and they follow um, different guidelines in the, in the community, like uh, the WordPress trademarks um, guideline um, and different things like that. So, if you are interested in hosting online workshops for the training team, the very first thing you want to do is apply. Um, apply to facilitate. Um, and you'll see here, there's a link at the top. Um, you can apply to facilitate here. Let's have a look at that link. Um, there we go. And so some questions we ask you, first of all, your name and email address so we can get, contact you. Um, your WordPress or your username. Um, so uh, when we vet someone, uh, we will look at their WordPress or profile to see what other teams they may have contributed to in the past, um, what badges they might have. Um, and this, this is just to make sure this isn't a brand new person to WordPress because a facilitator of an online workshop, they will talk about a topic, they'll answer questions. So we want somebody with at least a little bit of experience um, it doesn't have to be years and years, but we do want to see a little bit of um, experience with WordPress. And so we will take a look at your WordPress.org profile. Um, something else we need is your meetup.com user profile link. Um, so in order to register for today's event, you probably had to connect, uh, create a meetup.com account. Um, so we need you to send that because um, once you are approved as a facilitator, you would then add it to the online workshop meetup group where you can create events, etc. Then the next question is the important one. Where can we find you online? Please share links to your website and as many social media accounts as applicable, um, such as Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, etc. And this is the important part of the application process. We will, we when I say we, I mean the training team. When the training team looks at new applicants. Um, what we are looking for is whether you have been a good member in the community up to now. So for example, in WordPress, we, we have a few guidelines like diversity is important. Um, we have an open and caring community for anybody who comes. And so in the vetting process, we check your um, social media accounts to see have you made any um, bad comments about other people in the past? Or um, what is your activity like? Are you a kind and welcoming person in your other activities in life? Um, so we're not, we're not gonna go back and check years and years and years, but um, do let us know what your um, social links are online. Um, yeah. And the details of what we look at when we um, vet applications is also listed in the handbook. So it's not a secret. 
So I've come back to the training team handbook. And if you go to reviewing fa facilitator applications, this lists all the criteria we look at when um, vetting new applicants. Um, so this links to the same guidelines as faculty members. So if I click that, So it says here, we check the WordPress or profile, look for activity in the support forums, contributor badges, et cetera. And then the second point, check the applicant's presence online. How long have they worked with WordPress? What is their knowledge of the workshop topic? Um, do they have any trademark or GPL violations? So if you are a plugin or theme developer, then we will check your plugin or theme just to make sure it, it um, it follows the rules around the WordPress trademark and the GPL guidelines. Um, and we're looking for uh, discriminatory behavior. So hopefully most people don't have discriminatory behavior on their social media accounts. So that's good. Um, this check should go through fine. Um, but just so you know, that is what we are looking for when we ask for all your social media accounts. Um, all right, so coming back to the application for, form, after that, we ask you for your time zone, um, just so we know when you will be hosting online workshops and also who we can pair up with you to support you as you plan your first online workshop. Then we say, in what languages are you comfortable leading or co-hosting an online workshop? So online workshops don't have to be in English. They can be in any language. Um, so we have a good few people in, in the Zoom here. Um, from different parts of the world. Um, you can host online workshops in your own language as well. I host Japanese online workshops because I live in Japan. Um, so that is also a, a good point to keep in mind. Online workshops can be of any language. Then um, we have a, a quick question here. What categories or topics would you be most comfortable facilitating? Um, and in, is there anything else you think we should know? Um, so that is the application form. And you only need to do the application once. So the first time you want to host an online workshop, send the application form in. Let us know you're interested. We usually vet this within a, about a week. Um, if you don't hear back from us within two weeks, then it probably means your application went into um, our spam folder. So let us know, but usually you'll hear back from us within a week um, and then we can help you get set or prepare for your first online workshop. Um, so let me pause there, see if there are any questions. We've just looked at applying to facilitate, um, but are there any questions so far about what I've explained here? You can either unmute and ask or you can drop a note in the Zoom chat here. Are there any questions so far? Patrick, thank you. You have been very clear so far. Great. Um, well, I'll keep moving on. So, yep. Um, thank you, Faisal, for the thumbs up. All right, so you apply to facilitate, you get accepted, now what do you do? So that's when you come to planning an online workshop. So I'll drop this link in the Zoom chat as well to make sure we're on the same page. Um, so when you do an online workshop, the topic is very important. And so um, you will want to work with other people in the training team just to make sure your topic is relevant and accurate. Um, if you're going to use slides for your presentation, then you can have members of the training team review those for you as well to make sure like the spelling is correct and um, the information in your slides is correct. It, um, it's important to remember that online workshops, even though you are the facilitator, you, there's the whole training team that will support you in running that. So it's not a one person thing. Um, it's a team effort. So for example, um, 
I will show you the GitHub issue I created. Let's do that. Let's move that up here. All right. So every time we um, start a new piece of content in the training team, whether it's an online workshop, an online course, or anything, we create a new GitHub issue. And so you'll see here, I created a GitHub issue with the title Online Workshop, How to Facilitate Online Workshops for the WordPress Training Team. And I've added some details here, what the content type is, um, what the topic, a, a bit of a description about the topic, um, and then some learning objectives. So if somebody comes to this online workshop, what are they going to learn? What skills are they going to obtain? So learning objectives, apply to facilitate and or co-host online workshops, um, prepare to facilitate and or co-host an online workshop, successfully facilitate and or co-host online workshops. So if you come to this online workshop, you'll be able to know how to apply, how to prepare, and how to successfully facilitate online workshops. Um, so everything starts with a GitHub issue. Coming back to the handbook here, if you want to do a brand new topic, then you can definitely do that. Um, or you can have a look at the training team's GitHub project board that already has a bunch of vetted topics, which you can host online workshops on. So if we click this, that takes us to the WordPress um, Learns GitHub repository. And you see, we have a few um, issue templates here. So if you want to start a brand new issue, then you'd go to Content Development General. And it says you want to create a new piece of content or suggest a topic for the Learn WordPress website, start here. So you can press Get Started. And then this has that template I showed you before in my GitHub issue. Um, where we have like details and learning objectives. So you can write these out in this um, template as well to submit the topic for the team to um, vet for you. So what, what is the topic of your online workshop? Who is the audience? Is it users? Is it developers? Is it designers? What are the learning objectives? What are people going to learn if they come to your online workshop? Um, what's the content type, online workshop? And then will you be creating this content? Yes or no, you can type yes. Related resources. Um, and then once you submit this topic, somebody else in the training team will come and have a look at the topic and say, yep, this looks like a good topic. Or they might give you some feedback and say, hey, this topic is a bit outdated. How about if you update the content so that you're talking about this other thing? Um, so somebody will check the topic for you when you start out. So this handbook page, you're playing an online workshop, talks about that, that process of creating a new issue, submitting a topic and waiting for somebody to check the topic for you. So once you've created the GitHub issue and you've submitted that, you can start preparing. So you're still waiting for somebody to vet the topic for you. But while you're doing that, you can start preparing your content. Um, you can pick your conferencing tool. Um, if you, if you have a Zoom account, you can use Zoom. Some people might use uh, Google Meet um, or any other video conferencing tool is fine. Um, so you can choose on the conference, uh, conferencing tool. And then brainstorm how you want your online workshop to go. Are you going to have slides? Are you going to have group discussions? Are you going to have a demo of something? Are you going to like take questions and answers? Um, you can start to think about the details. And then also think about the schedule. When are you going to host this online workshop? Um, usually uh, we ask that you plan at least a week or two in advance um, because the training team will check your topic. If you're using slides, the training team will review your slides and we need time to do that. Plus people who register on meetup.com would prefer you had a few weeks in advance so they can match their schedules to attend the event. Um, so for me, I usually plan my online workshop the, for the following month, around the middle of this month. So the middle of May, I would plan my June online workshop. And then the middle of June, I would plan my July online workshop. And that way, that gives me a good few weeks to prepare. It also gives my audience um, a good few weeks to sign up. 
Um, and you can also promote your online workshop in your social media accounts um, to get more people to sign up as well. Um, so get a schedule, then um, start preparing, etc. So that was all part of the planning and online workshop section. Um, how is that? Are there any questions so far? Am I going too quick? Um, how is how is everybody going? All good. Great. Okay, so um, in a few days, hopefully, somebody will check your GitHub issue and they will give you feedback about your topic. Um, Rico, okay, thanks. Um, so once you've got feedback, you can then start to actually plan for your online workshop and get the details made. So first of all, um, we have to schedule it. And um, you notice I showed this calendar here before. Um, as an online workshop facilitator, you will be given access so that you can add an event to this calendar yourself. And you'll also be given access to add the event to the meetup.com page as well. And so we won't go into all the details right now, but this handbook page lists out how to create your event on meetup.com and then how to add your event to the Learn WordPress calendar. Um, so that, this access will be given after your application has been accepted. So if you want to host an online workshop, first apply to facilitate, then start a GitHub issue um, with your topic idea, and then wait a couple of days for the application to process and the GitHub issue to be processed, and then you'd be ready um, to schedule the online workshop and follow the next steps. Um, if you decide to use Zoom, then these steps, um, we have steps here listed for Zoom. Some people might not have a premium Zoom account. I think the free version only allows for like 40 minutes in a conference, um, but the training team has a paid for Zoom account. So if you want to borrow the training team's account for your online workshop, you can do that. Um, and the instructions for doing that are listed in this page. So if you have your own premium account, you're more than welcome to use that. Um, but there are steps here for people who don't have their own Zoom account, you can use the training team's account. All right, so we planned, we scheduled, um, and then we finally come down to hosting an online workshop. Um, so these give you some tips um, about how to host an online workshop. And so these tips on this page uh, apply to Learn's online workshops, but they also apply to any other online event. So if you host online events for your meetup or um, other groups like that, then these tips will apply for you as well. So I'll copy this link into the Zoom chat here. Um, so some tips we have. First of all, work with a co-host. Um, so, Usually, um, usually, if you have a co-host, this really helps. For example, today, as people have joined in, I've been accepting them and letting them in. Um, so I've been sort of been able to manage it myself. But some of the training team's most popular online workshops get over 100 attendees. And so once you get that many people joining, that many people asking questions, it's a bit difficult for the facilitator to look after everything on their own. And so we highly recommend um, folks work with a co-host um, when they facilitate an online workshop. So if you're interested in facilitating an online workshop, but maybe you want to sort of do something a bit easier to get involved first, you can actually volunteer to be a co-host in somebody else's online workshop and get to know how they prepare and how they work and then after that, you can become a facilitator as well. Um, so becoming a co-host, um, we still have the same application form as applying to facilitate. Um, and at the end here, it says, is there anything else you think we should know? You can add here, I just want to start off as a co-host first and watch somebody else facilitate before I do my online workshops. That's totally fine. Um, 
I actually recommend you work as a co-host, first of all, um, and then work with somebody in their online workshop before you become your own facilitator. So work with a co-host. And that's why we have a, another handbook page on the left here, all about co-hosting an online workshop. So the tips in this page are for the co-host and what they can do to help the facilitator run a effective online workshop. All right, and then we have some other points here. Um, advanced preparation, prepare early. And that's why we recommend planning online workshops a couple of weeks out. Arrive early, make sure Zoom is started and everything set um, so that when people come, they can come in right away. Turn on accessibility features. Um, you might notice um, I have captions turned on for this online workshop. So for people who it might be difficult to understand my English, uh, we also have captions here that help them follow along a bit more. Um, use security features. So this doesn't happen often, um, but in the last couple of years, there have been some online workshops where somebody, uh, a community member has joined in and they have not followed the guidelines of a safe community. Um, they've broken a rule. And um, sometimes in the worst case, we have to kick these people out of an online workshop. Um, and But there are a few security features we can turn on to prevent this from happening. Um, so we have a section in this page all about these security features you can turn on. Um, there's a note about screen sharing, um, starting with a hook, something to get people, oops, something to get people um, excited about the topic. Um, you can consider doing an icebreaker. At the beginning of this session, I asked folks to introduce themselves. Um, you can do icebreakers like this. Um, set expectations, share your slides. In this particular one, I'm just wor working through the training team handbooks, so I don't have any slides. But if you're doing an online workshop, that has slides, then we highly recommend you share your slides with the participants. Um, and this allows people to follow on along in their own um, pace. Um, they can look at the resources again after the online workshop is done. Um, and it also helps people that might have like accessibility needs. Um, they can download the slides and change the color or change the font to match their needs. So we highly recommend people share their slides when doing an online workshop. Um, so that's a bunch of tips. And of course, if you if you scroll down the page, you'll see we have more text you can read here. Um, but yeah, these some of these will apply to other online events. So if you're interested, um, do take a look at this. And then the handbook, we have a few more pages, co-hosting online workshop tools for hosting. Um, and then finally, after an online workshop. So at the beginning of this recording, I mentioned this online workshop is recorded and it will be uploaded to WordPress.tv and also to YouTube. Um, and this page um, explains how you as the facilitator can upload the recording to WordPress.tv. Um, so when an online workshop finishes, there are actually two things we ask facilitators to do. The first one is to record the attendance in our attendance spreadsheet. So this sheet is visible to anyone to have a look. And you'll see here, um, we have date, we have the meetup URL, we have the language, we have the topic, um, we have how many people RSVP'd, how many people actually came, what the attendance rate is, and then where what the WordPress.tv recording link is. So you'll see we have a tab at the bottom, 2021 to 2022, 2023, and then 2024, starting from January, and we can go all the way down. Um, so later today, once this session is done, I'll also be adding my information here. Um, but we ask facilitators to do this so we can keep track of how our online workshops are doing and um, consider what improvements we might be able to make. Um, so if you scroll through here, you'll see we have EN, which is English. We have JA, which is Japanese. Um, this year, it's just been Japanese and English. Uh, but some years we've had like um, Bangla, online workshops. Um, 
I think we had a Greek online workshop sometime as well. So any language, again, um, is okay. So after an online workshop, record your attendance and then also upload the recording to wordpress.tv. And then we have some steps here about how you can do that. And we have an optional uh, feedback form for you as the facilitator to send feedback to the training team um, about the whole process. What can we improve? Um, yeah, so that is an overview of what an online workshop is, how you can apply to facilitate, and then how you can prepare for the actual presentation. That is pretty much all the content I had prepared. Were there any questions people had or maybe um, something you want me to explain a bit more? Hi there. So hey. uh, basically, uh, you just showed that uh, we can uh, do workshop in different languages. So mm -hmm. do you recommend uh, to do the workshop in English so that uh, as many people can uh, join? Because if you do... Mm do for example i'm from bangladesh so if i do mm -hmm. in bangla maybe i mm -hmm. will have less attendees but if i do in english maybe i will have yep. more, more attendees so is it better to have in english than other languages good question and i would say not necessarily um english might get more people attend but there are probably people who can only speak speak bangla and so if you did a presentation in bangla they would be they, you would be targeting a different group of people um so of course it's exciting when more people attend but the training team isn't looking for just attending numbers we're trying to if we could we would like to host online workshops in every language in the world um so something i've done is i might prepare a presentation and do an english online workshop first as a practice run, and then do the exact same content, translate my slides into Japanese and do a Japanese version later, or the other way around. Um, so really, any language you're comfortable with would be good. Got it. Got it. Yep. Um, and if you want to, like, gather people to come to your online workshop, like if you do a Bangla online workshop, um, maybe um, you might need to like promote it a bit in your social networks or have your colleagues or friends also promote it as well. Um, because people who are registered to this online workshop meetup group are mostly English speakers. Um, so you might have to do a bit of work to get people involved, um, but that's totally fine. Um, yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, were there any other questions or anything else I could explain for folks? If you do an online workshop in another language, um, we still ask that you prepare the GitHub issue in English so the training team can understand what's going on. Um, but let me see if I can quickly find Go to issues closed Japanese. Here we go. So this person, um, he prepared, he did this Japanese online workshop in the issue title. He said it's a Japanese online workshop and he has the Japanese title, uh, but he also has the English and the details here are filled out in English so that the training team can um, give feedback about the content um, and help him and support him with that. Um, so he has the Japanese details down here as well, but that's about the only thing I would um, suggest. If you're going to do an online workshop in another language, still create the GitHub issue in English um, so the training team can support you and um, help you with that. All right. How many people would like to become a facilitator? Um, I'm not going to force anyone here in this recording, um, but let me send this link to you once more. Um, so this is the link uh, that talks about how to apply to facilitate. We would love to have more facilitators in the training team. Um, if you look at the calendar, you'll see we have about one a week at the moment. 
Well, this week we have four. That's pretty good. Um, my dream is that one day we would have like an online workshop every single day of the week. Um, so yes, yay. If I say you've got your hands up, Patrick, you said you'd love to. Um, please um, apply to facilitate. Recall, yes, Moin, yes, great. Um, again, the application form, that, that's not when we like choose people. It's just to make sure that a code of conduct is protected and this person um, can represent the WordPress brand. So most people get approved. Um, and then the other thing I would recommend is if, you're, if you haven't joined the training team's Slack channel yet, then I recommend you join that um, because that's where conversations happen. Facilitators have questions. Um, when they prepare an online workshop, they will come to the training team Slack channel and ask questions there. Um, so you'll see here, I'm in the training Slack channel at the moment. I'm a training team representative right now. Um, so I um, help the team with the administration of different things. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, you can pop in here. Um, you can see it's a pretty active channel. We have a lot of people asking questions and getting involved. If you don't have a Slack account yet, then you can make that from, uh, I think it's make.wordpress.org slash chat. Yep. Um, so if you don't have a Slack account yet, um, you can do that. Um, you, create a Slack account and then come to the training channel and you can ask your questions there. Um, and yeah, Patrick, you said you would love to start as a co-host first. Great. Um, in our GitHub, let's see, if we come over here, maybe I can go back. You'll see, we actually have a needs co-host label in the GitHub issue. Um, ah, so, uh, my this online workshop was the only one that needed a co-host. You'll notice I didn't have a co-host today. Um, but if you check this link uh, from time to time, when somebody creates a new online workshop, they will have the needs co-host label. And so you could volunteer and say, hey, I would like to be a co-host for you. Um, but anyway, in your application at the very bottom, it says you can, oops, not that one. And at the bottom of your online workshops application, it says, is there anything else you would you think we should know? Add a comment there. Say you would like to start with a co-host. Um, you can even say, please pair me up with someone that needs a co-host. Um, and we would be happy to do that for you. All right. Um, we're a few minutes early, but I'm going to end the recording there. And if anybody uh, would prefer to ask questions off the recording, I'll be here for a few more minutes um, to answer your questions. Um, but anyway, we had a great turnaround today. Thank you, Faisal, for inviting more people. I think at the maximum, we, I think we, I saw 12 people in this call at once. So thank you all for coming. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you join the WordPress training team as an online workshop facilitator. All right, thank you very much.